What is up you guys? It's your girl Jenna here. Today I wanted to talk to you about contingencies because contingency is one of those scary words on a sales contract that always freak people out. So today I wanted to break it down for you in a very digestible way so that it's easier to understand and not so scary when you're looking at a sales contract. So whenever you see the word contingency, I want you to automatically replace it with the word condition because that's what it is. A contingency is simply a condition that must be met or satisfied to make the terms of a contract legally binding. So on a sales contract, there could be a million different contingencies slash clauses slash conditions, but there are three main ones on any given sales contract that you can remember with the acronym FIA. So F is for financing, I is for inspection, and A is for appraisal. So let me break that down. Starting off with F, if you have a financing contingency in place on your sales contract, this simply means that you had applied for a loan to help finance your home. And while it's going through that underwriting process where the lender is trying to figure out if you're qualified or if you're credible enough for them to back you up, with their money this can go one of two ways it could be either get accepted slash approved which is great that means that they found you credible and they are going to back you up and help you finance that purchase which is great that means the financing contingency can be removed off of the table and you're good to go with that. But on the other hand, if your loan gets denied for one reason or another, having the financing contingency in place is just going to protect you and give you an out to void the contract and still get your earnest money deposit back. But in the case that you decided to waive your financing contingency, which I never recommend, but people do it, if you waive your financing contingency and your loan gets denied, now you don't have grounds to void the contract while still protecting your earnest money deposit. So what this means is that if you waived your financing contingency and your loan got denied, now you're responsible for financing the purchase of that home without that loan. So that's where it can get a little bit messy. Next, we have I for inspection. So if you have a home inspection contingency in place, this will allow you to negotiate repairs with the sellers or void the contract based on any findings in the home inspection that were not up to par for you that you were not anticipating. So this could be a lot of big ticket items like a lot of water damage or a bad roof that the seller might not be willing to repair, but you also might not be able to repair with your own funding. With that being said, if you had decided to waive the home inspection contingency, now you don't have grounds to negotiate repairs with the sellers, nor do you have grounds to void the contract and still get your earnest money deposit back. Lastly, we have appraisal. Whether or not you have the appraisal contingency in place or if you decided to waive it, there will still be an appraisal done on the home. But having the appraisal contingency in place will allow you to negotiate on the price if the appraisal comes back at a lower price than the agreed on sales price. Let me explain. For example, if you had agreed on the contract to pay $500,000 for this home and the appraisal comes back at four fifty. dollars that means that you are overpaying and the value of the home is appraised at lower than what you agreed to pay for it. If you have the appraisal contingency in place, this will allow you to go back to the sellers and say, hey, the home came back appraised at 450 and I agreed to pay 500, but it's not worth that much. So would you be willing to lower the price off of that? But if the appraisal comes back higher, that means that you got a deal for the house. That means that you paid only 500, even though the home came back at say 550. But in the case that you decided to waive the appraisal contingency, no matter what that appraisal came back at, you now have no grounds to negotiate that price. So you're stuck paying whatever that agreed on sales price is. All right, so I hope you found that helpful and I hope it gave you a better understanding of the purpose of contingencies on a sales contract as well as how they work and what they mean. So if you found this helpful, be sure to share this with a friend or tag one down below so that it can help someone else out. Thanks so much for watching.